Welcome to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. Issue 2 of Kevin Scott's High Republic comic series recently dropped and it was another fun and intriguing issue, especially regarding our homie Skier. I've got some thoughts on what might be happening with him that we'll get to shortly, but for now, let's recap what happened in the issue and dive into some of my thoughts. Newly anointed Jedi Knight Keeve Trennis, her former master Skier, and Jedi Knights Tarek and Serret are in the galactic frontier of the Outer Rim territories, making their way to the Kazlan system after Starlight Beacon picked up a distress signal from a ship that had come under a attack. Tarek and Serret are Kotabi Bond twins, which means the siblings essentially share the same mind and thoughts, and can even feel emotions and pain that the other sibling is feeling. When the Jedi arrive in the Kazlan system, they discover the wreckage of a ship, but can send survivors. They then board the decimated ship, discover poisonous gas inside, realize the Nile are to blame for what's transpired here, and the group split into pairs to investigate. Skier, however, soon finds himself flashing back to the Battle of Kerr, where shrapnel flew into his Jedi vector and chopped off his arm, which is currently in the process of growing back. As the Jedi venture deeper into the bowels of the ship, Keeve and Serret discover the bodies of a dead hut and several Nyctos and Gamorians. Meanwhile, Skier and Tarek continue their search and discover small amounts of a crop, specifically some kind of barley, which raises the question, what were the huts up to and why were the Nile interested? Before they know it, however, Skier and Tarek come under fire and Tarek is hit in the gut, which Serret is also able to feel. Skier hunts down the Nile attacker and, although he can't sense the marauder, finds him and judo chops this dude into oblivion. I mean, my guy just goes ham on this Nile and chops him up. Something is clearly up with Skier. So what exactly is going on with him? Well, I think two things are happening with Skier. One, our boy definitely is having some PTSD following the Battle of Kerr and the loss of his arm, causing Skier to take his anger and aggression out on this Nile because of what happened to him. Regardless of the fact that Trandoshans can regrow limbs, that would still be a traumatic experience, especially when coupled with fighting in a large battle where his Jedi brethren and members of the Republic Defense Coalition were also killed or injured. We also have to remember that the Jedi of the High Republic are way different from the Jedi of the prequels. The galaxy has been at peace for a very long time, and the Jedi of the High Republic are way less violent and militarized than the prequel era Jedi, which further hammers home the point that Skier isn't doing well. Additionally, at the conclusion of Issue 1, following the opening of Starlight Beacon, we saw a Skier retreat to a secluded part of the beacon and scream out in horror. I believe this connects back to the ending of Light of the Jedi. I'm going to talk about Light of the Jedi now, so spoilers ahead. Turn back now if you don't want anything spoiled. At the end of Light of the Jedi, following the opening of Starlight Beacon, Jedi Master Elzar Mann has a terrible vision in the Force where he saw Jedi fighting awful battles against some kind of dark side beings and Jedi were being horribly mutilated and killed. The timeline of Elzar Mann's Force vision lines up with the ending of issue 1 of the High Republic, so I believe Skier had the same force vision that Elzar Mann had. When coupled with the trauma and injury he sustained during the Battle of Kerr, in Light of the Jedi, I believe this is why we're seeing Skier lash out in this way. Skier could be distraught realizing that his force vision may become a reality and he's acting out because of it, and maybe he feels hopeless that he might not be able to prevent the horrible fate he believes will befall the Jedi. I'm sure we'll eventually find out why Skier is acting the way that he is, but I'm I'm thinking it's because of those reasons. Anyway, back to the issue. With the assistance of Starlight Beacon, the Jedi are able to figure out that the barley crop, called Veratixia, is a key ingredient in that new miracle treatment Bacta, and that the destroyed ship had most recently traveled from the Sidri system, most likely from the colony Sedri Minor. Sarad and Skier travel to Sedri Minor while Keeve and Tarek stay behind to wait for my homegirls Avar Chris and Vernestra Rowe to arrive on the decimated ship. When Avar and Vernestra arrive, Avar becomes extremely worried about Skier and what he did to the Nile. Meanwhile, once Sarad and Skier land on Sedri Minor, they meet locals who tell them the Republic isn't welcome before Sarad is pulled away by a suspicious Rodian hanging out in the barley field. Sarad is then attacked by some weird looking creature which Tarek is able to feel, prompting Skier to try to run and save him but to no avail. Skier only finds Sarad's lightsaber, with Sarad nowhere to be found, concluding the issue. Although I enjoyed issue 1 a little bit more, issue 2 was still really 
really entertaining. I'm very interested to see what's plaguing skier and why the huts are interested in a crop that's used for making Bacta. Are they trying to create their own version and sell it on the black market? And how do the Nile play into this? It'll be interesting to see how things play out. Also, shout out to colorist Annalisa Leone who's done a fantastic job in the series thus far. The colors used in each of the issues have been superb and there have been multiple times where I found myself enamored with the choice of colors used in panels throughout the comic. Issue 3 drops next month and I can't wait to continue the story. But what did you guys think about Issue 2 of The High Republic and what do you think is going on with Skier? Let us know down in the comments. If you like this video, please help out the channel by hitting that like button and making sure you subscribe. Follow the channel on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at Dan's on Fandoms. Thanks for watching and stay nerdy.